Hi, it's Karen from Stamping on the Back Porch. This is only my second time doing a YouTube live. I couldn't remember how to do it, so I had to go back and watch a little tutorial about it. You know, tech is just a little hard in my age, but we struggle through. So thanks for watching. And what we're going to be doing today is talking about ways to add color to your card beyond. We're not going to be doing, we're not using watercolor pencils, and we're not going to be coloring with blends, which is my absolute favorite way to color. We're just going to do some other kind of fun techniques with color. And we're hoping it's working this time. So we'll see. We will get started. I got to put my computer here so I can I can watch for comments. Oh, and I'm dropping things. So we'll see how this goes. I always get a little rattled when tech doesn't work, but I know that's true for everyone. So very first, we're going to make a quick card. So my goal for myself this morning was to come up with a different way of using each of these stamps with color. So that's what I'm going to do. The first one I'm going to do, I, I just love a card like this. And this is very, very simple. We are going for black and white. Black and white card. And it's always stylish. You know, black and white will never be out of favor. So to add to this, I'm using some new B paper, the back side. Oh, good, it's working. Oh, and we have some people on. So thanks. Afterwards, I will go on and respond. The last time I did one, I couldn't find the comments afterwards. And then I finally figured that out. So bit by bit, we get there. So this first way is obviously not adding any color. I think sometimes when we have detailed stamps it just feels like we should add color but we don't need to and i like this for a little stamp i think this is a fun way to just kind of highlight and i didn't even know what i was going to put on here but this would be the little oh let's see i could put this anywhere i also was thinking it would be fun to hang a little tag on here but I didn't know what occasion this was for yet, so I'm just leaving the idea. This is also just a fun layout for using, you know, you're, you're highlighting the paper, but it's a fun way to just use a small stamp. Okay, so that's our first. Now you might like this crooked little look or you might like to get your straighter, but you know, that's the magic of going live. So <laughs> I said, my motto in life is, you know, good enough is good enough, it's just a card. No, I will, but you know, I'll have to remove it anyway to add words to it. So that is stamp number one. And next, you know, sometimes I think smaller stamps are a little harder to think of what to do with so I'm gonna start with those, especially for making bigger cards. So the next one's gonna be this, this other small one. You can see what a rush I was in. I did not put my labels on, and I always do, but uh, I uh, <laughs> I was racing. I'll peel those off and put them on too. So what I did with this was I put out four of the stitch shapes this isn't the tiniest one, but it's the next one up. And then I put words, another one. And these words are from parcels and petals. But really, I just wanted anything that would fit in here. And we are going to use markers. Oh, good. People like that look. So I said, and sometimes, you know, I think it's fun to just kind of think out of the box a little and make things. And these are all, all but one are quick ways, you know, to add some color. Now, this... I love doing this and I realize I haven't done this for a while. I'm just making cool backgrounds out of my markers. And I'm gonna pick light colors so that it's easy to see the stamped image. I could use bold colors if this image you know, is so detailed. If it were just a bulkier image, if I were really just doing it this on the techniques, I might pick different stamps. But because I chose to use this, then I'll just make sure it's light colors. And on this one, since it doesn't have any color on it, 
I'm gonna just add some color at the top and bottom. And now I'm going to stamp on these. I'm so glad so many of you have joined me because I'm gonna do these sometimes too because you know, I just like to try different things and, and how cute is this? So now you could do this on a large scale with stamps too. I'm just gonna go around. And each of these is colored a little bit differently. You can't do them alike. That's why it's kind of this fun random look. And now I'm going to put those on layer card stock. I love the, these stitch shapes are my most used. And whenever I am cutting out shapes, I do a few extra. So then when I'm playing around with ideas like today, I don't have to go make more. I just take a few off my bucket. And it just helps me kind of figure out what size I might want. So I'm going to add that in the words. So this is what it's like, and then I'll show you the finished card. So I just took this, added some ribbon right across, and then layered again. So the three colors that I used here were... Um, Petal pink, so saffron, soft seafoam, so the light colors. So here's another way, and I, you know, it's just a fun way to have that pop of color, and yet I haven't colored in the image. It's just really the background paper. So that's the second stamp, and now we'll go with the third stamp. See, I have to show you one here since I didn't put the labels on. <laughs> so the next one we're going to go with is this old-fashioned little water pump. You know, this is French countryside, and I just think these images are really beautiful. And, you know, it's kind of like, you just kind of want to be there. Just It's just very restful and for gardeners and for reminiscing. You know, it's just fun, all those kinds of things. So this is going to be just a quick reminder on doing this. So I like to um, do this every now and then because it's so easy to forget to use just the blender pen for colors. Now this, and I'm gonna just talk about inks for a minute here, but this is all of the regular inks. You know, they're water-based. And so now when I do this and just start coloring, it pulls out the color. So it's just great for making a monochromatic, a monochromatic card. And I'm, I'm kind of doing the bigger areas first. And if I do that dark, and then I try to go over just real lightly on that part, I'll get some different shades in. So again, you're just gonna play with this. Now I cannot add, if I add another color on here, it's gonna turn, I'm gonna add a little bit just to show this. Let's say I wanted to add my green grass here over right here. It's not going to, to show up nicely. See, I can just rub off what I did extra because you still the brown is going to mix with it. So this kind of look is best for monochromatic or make sure you leave space around something. So, you, you know, you just play with it, but I absolutely love this look for something fun. Now I could come in with yeah, I think I'll just, I'm just gonna leave it like that because that's just the idea here. We'll do all that. And then you clean your blender pen just by wiping with that. And in the show notes, I will put the, the recipe for refilling these. You can pop that end out and put in so when they dry out, you can fill them like that and then just leave them flat and they will spread out. So that is a fun thing. Okay, so for this, we will add, I use all of, you'll see how often I use the stitch shapes, and then I also love the layering circles, ovals, and squares, because you see how these work so well together? And I'm going to just put this on this card. I am 
Oh, good. More people are joining. I'm trying to watch your comments, and it seems like it moves a whole bunch at once and then not. So I will come back. But again, really a quick card. And moving along, this next one, uh, this will be fun. This is, you know, really more detailed than I would maybe choose to do too. But do you see this birdhouse? And I'll show you what we're going to make with it. I'll show you the finished card first. So here is the finished card. And I just want you to notice how we have all these other little colors in here. Um, so you could do this like, with a big stamp or anything like that too. This is live, if you're wondering. You are on live, Francis. So with this one, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to take, to keep it simple, I'm going to take just three markers and I'm going to do it two different ways here. So I have my Cajun craze and I'm going to color that. I'm so glad you joined us. You know, this new catalog starts. January 3rd, if anyone needs the catalogs, just give me a message. And then I'm going to come around and I'm going to do this all in green. And then I'm going to take blue. I have a couple of choices with the blue. I could go in and try to find the flowers or put little blobs, but I'm going to do this. We call this thumping. Um, just so we can fit in some more techniques because I just want some little mix of colors in here. Now I'm going to show you first what this is going to look like and I don't need to worry. I always put my lightest color underneath but I can just clean that off. You can see at the very beginning there's just a touch of green but not much and then my pen is ready to use again. So I'm going to show you what this looks like without misting it. And then we're gonna do it again with misting it, which is gonna turn it into watercolor. What I found was interesting, adding that blue really looks more like um, like a teal. It's kind of mixed those colors together. But I think it's really a fun look and it just looks like that mixed, uh, mixed area. Now, if we wanna turn this into a watercolor, so I'll do it one more time and it can look more watercolor. Now, ideally I would clean my stamp first, but I'm not going to bother. I will just clean my, before I did the green, but I'm just going to keep my green on the same side so I know where to clean it. And I'll go over all my green and then I can just do that. And I'm going to take it back. And I don't know if you can see well enough, but you can see where it's really dark at the beginning. Yeah, there. But now the dark is off and I have plain green. So it won't hurt your markers. You just, you just don't want to scrub your markers or go the other way. If you pull back and clean them that way, it won't ever do that. Tim is not available today. We have, uh, he has so many appointments and things going on. So I, I am alone today. Usually he is here. Well, he's actually here. He had to come home and help me do the, you wanna say hi, Tim? Help me do the background. I said, we really don't have time. <laughs> so we're gonna, so, you know, he's, he's just, getting a little by here again. And now how much water I missed on this is going to determine how water colored this is going to look, how water colory. You know, there's two kinds of water color because I mean, there's one kind, but you can make it really loose or you can make it just a little bit mixed. And I'm not using watercolor paper either. I'm just using, because I'm only getting a little bit light. Okay, so now I have spritz it and I have no idea this is like hard to control if you're making a bunch of and I'm going to hold this a while because I want the inks if they're wet at all to just kind of mix if you're making a bunch of these you're going to find that they all can turn out a little differently but that's fun that's part of the fun of doing this and we'll just see do you see how the comparison is here this is a much more vivid richer look so I'm going to lift this up so this is a cool idea too. Now I could have made the birdhouse too in two colors and then that would have been more watercolor too. It depends on, you know, I try to do things that are just really quick or I could have added some other colors, but I, I love what it did to the greens. I, I think it's just really a fun look. Oh, Kathy's taking a break from gift wrapping. It is that season, isn't it? <laughs> I said, <laughs> now there's on a break today. So, <laughs> yeah, so this is a, 
uh, just a really cool technique with this. And then, you know, it was a smaller, so I just quickly put that together in a card. On to another one. I said, this is pretty fun. Let's see. Oh, I was gonna show this. So on to the next one now, we're gonna do this. Large one, trying to see, move, move towards you. Okay, you know, you guys know. Oh, see, and I should be able to see that. Okay, this is it. Have you seen the other things enough? Okay, so yeah. So anyway, this hopefully will just give you some fun ideas. It'll be some great ideas if you're getting this, and then you also can just do anything else. I'm gonna talk for just a minute about the two black inks. Right now, I'm gonna get this wet. And here's what I've done. When do I use stays on? When do I use Memento? So here's my biggest thing for remembering. Memento is my go-to pad. I love it. it. Doesn't stain your stamps. It's easy to work with. And I use it anytime I'm just stamping black and nothing's gonna be wet. It is also what you use if you're using Stampin' Blends. Those are the alcohol markers that we're not. I'm not using today. So when you use stays on, and this is what I love to do. I just put a little tab on the back so I remember I don't have to look up a chart. I don't have to do anything. The blender pens, because this is getting wet, that doesn't work with stays on. So anything that's going to get, I mean, it doesn't work with a memento. Anything that's going to get wet, you want the stays on. So this is stays on because I'm going to get it wet. Watercolor pencils, if you're going to get it wet, you're going to use this. The aqua painter and brusho, any of that kind of stuff but I think by having a little tag on the back it's just easier than trying to think each time because you really do need the two types of black ink because we use black all the time so I, I stamped this early just to make sure it'd be plenty dry and for this card I'm going to do a little just, I'm just going to do a background so I'm going to take a little pool party I'm going to put it on my on my block and I'm gonna squeeze out a little water because I want a little lighter. So I, I want to kind of play light and I'll put it there. I mean, I can always run out of my paper. Yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty good, but I, I don't want it too wet. Okay, and I'm just gonna start moving water on here. Done. So how fast is this? And then I'm gonna show you the finished card. And I just think this makes a really lovely look. Added a couple sequins. You know, you could do this kind of on anything that just has a bolt in there. But isn't that a pretty background? I mean, I think it just kind of makes the card just, okay, is that good? Okay. And, well, actually, if Tim has a few minutes, maybe I will have him come on and do a little bit. Yeah, we might put him on if he doesn't have to rush out of here, okay? I was going to have him just do a traditional, more traditional watercolor, but you know he doesn't do anything traditionally. So that'll be after the next card here, okay? So I'm going to put this one aside. And now we're going to do something else that's really interesting. This is the card we're going to make. So I just love this because it's totally unusual because usually we would put the color in the image itself, but instead the color is around the image. So have I used the Vers Versamark ink? Is that what you're talking about? I haven't on these. I use that if I'm embossing and some of those things. Um, and for some other techniques that we aren't going to do today. Okay, so this one, there's the stitch I use stitch all the time. This is stitched rectangles. I'm gonna take this and some soft suede. You know, once you've used stays on, and I don't feel fussy, there is a stays on cleaner. Eventually I use that, but I don't worry in between. My stamp can look like this. This isn't gonna come off. It is stained until I, oh, but this is what's coming off because I stamped that last. But you can see I've had it in, in um, let me see if I can wipe my hands off a tidbit there. You can see because of the dark color, I have had it in the stays on. So eventually I will clean it, but I never worry about it in between because it's not gonna impact what I put it in. If it's a permanent stain on the stamp, as long as it's clean, it still won't hurt anything else. Okay, so this time I'm going to take my, I'm 
And to take my image in, let's see, I'm gonna put it fairly far down, I think. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And so here's my image. And then I'm going to take post-it note. And let's see, let me make sure I get the parts. I wanna get a couple of the parts up in the sticky part. So I'll just do that without re-inking, because now this is what, and oh, that's not gonna work. And now I better re-ink it, because it wasn't on the sticky. You have to figure out which part is sticky first. It makes a big difference. So now I'll put that on. And then I always cut at least two at a time. This is kind of fine, so I might just do two. Typically, I'll do three or four because then I just leave them in my thing. And I'm going to cut right inside the line because there's always that little bump when you put things on. And because this kind of a card isn't as exacting, I mean, it's not really going to matter if there's some little white spaces or anything because it's just kind of a cool look. And you probably could go in with a sponge and fix anything anyway. But, and, you know, the scissors, the cutting paper out trick is to leave your scissors stable. But if I can cut two or three at a time, then I'm not going to have to do this. And then I just keep them in my box with the stamps in the container. Um, but if I'm going to make a whole bunch and one loses it sticky, or if you have several people sharing, there's enough to go around. Let's see, so I'm not being too... I'm not being too careful about getting this too exact, as you can tell. <laughs> but that's kind of fun. Okay. So now I'll just take one off. And this one's perfectly good, too. And I will put that on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes we do like to do things, you know, sometimes you're in the mood to color or do something really putsy. But sometimes I think people are afraid of choosing to buy a stamp set like this because you just kind of think color. So I just love showing that you can do lots of things, other ways of adding color, and they kind of make fun, unexpected cards. So for this one, I have a second sponge, and I have to use just the one because I think it rolled away. So here's a couple of tips for sponging. If I do this and start going right down, sometimes I get too much of a blob in the middle. So what I'm going to do is start down here and then start moving up. So I'm kind of flowing up from there and I can come back and I can, add, you know, I can press harder and make more. You like my shaky table? It's the antique library table that's been in my family. Okay. So I just go right to the other color since my other one rolled away. Oh, no, I found it. It did not roll away. I just have too much clutter on my table. But, you know, we're doing, what, six cards or something. So <laughs> it's hard to do it without. Okay, and here I'm going to do the same thing. Here you might even notice it more. So if you ever get something then that looks like that and you kind of get that blob and think, oh, that isn't what I wanted. Again, I would rather have it be lighter to start with and then go back and add more color if you want. So I started with the lighter, but what I typically do at the end is go back again with my lighter color to blend even more. And it might even need more ink, we'll see. I'll go over and blend the two together. So you could do this in blues. This could be a blue sky. It could be a sunset. Look, Think of all the different colors that you could do with this. This is just what I happen to use for this card. It could be anything. And look, when you peel that off, how cool that is. Now this one, I blended more, and, you know, but it doesn't matter. And then I just layered it on the cards and put it on there. So is that a fun? Um, I use the daubers. Oh, I'll have to show daubers sometime. I use the daubers for a lot of things, and you can do it here. If I want things to kind of blend together, let's see, I'd love to add a little more of this. I like to have a little broader thing than the daubers. But you know, you can use a, you know, I tend to say it's kind of rounded, but you can use anything you have on hand. You know, any kind of, you know, I would say just use whatever. But if I bring this up now and put this more together, that's what I do, because I always like to add a little more of the yellow at the end. Um, Daubers just have a little finer, so they would work. You just to be more careful because they're even easier to get dots on. Sometimes I love the dots look. But if you 
Okay, <laughs> this is what I did. <laughs> and I got some yellow down there. <laughs> Guess it's not covered in. Oh, it was on my hand. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, it's, it's all part of the game, isn't it? It's all part of playing. So this is, oh, and it's going to be cool because I will have him come up here. I'm going to explain first what he's going to do so that he can listen to what he's going to do. Um, and I'm going to use this. And uh, I have to clean up part of this because we're going to put three colors on here. <laughs> I am going to have you bring that over. I did want to mention the new watercolor paper. Just the picture that's stamped there. We have this new watercolor paper. It's Fluid 100. I love it. It just blends. So that's what I used on this. It's um, smoother, but I just, it is, I don't know. I like it a whole lot more than the other. So that's really fun. So a shout out for that. And then I did this. Now this, he's going to watercolor. It's going to get wet. Therefore, he's going to use the aqua painter. So we stamped it and stays on. And that is that is why that stamp looks like that. But it's okay until I'm done with that kind of stuff. So then he's going to color just traditionally. I said he can color however he, or however he wants. So we have blue. We have some green. And this is pear pizzazz. And then we have um, soft suede. And Tim can do his magic or whatever. <laughs> So what you're saying is that I didn't get out of the house quick enough. And that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> well, hello, That's okay. I'll be your assistant. We'll, we'll end with putting it up on top. So you can go ahead. And as just a reminder, you're, you'll squeeze and make sure there's water and mix okay, up things with water enough. first. This, this is, color is enough that? in the blue. That's blue? So that's kind of how you want it to look like. When color green, but that's pure green. What's well, that? it's a blue green. It's pool party. But see, by the time you squeeze and add a little water to make it lighter, it'll be really. Just take that and put it on this paper, and you see that. So that's just really dark. It's still green. Okay. That's a blue green. And the reason we don't want it terribly dark on this card is because of all the fine features. So it gets lost in the dark. So you say it's blue. So it's sky. It is, it's blue enough. It's blue green, but it's blue enough. It's sky. Yeah. Or whatever you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> So now this is more traditional. And for those of you who love to color, this is a great way. And if you're making a bunch of these, you'd go through and you'd do all the sky first, you know, so because you want things to dry before you get them adjacently. Or you can take your time and do one at a time. So who likes to watercolor? Yeah, Christine says, you got this, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now. But I would do this kind of thing at a class too. That's why we're only using three colors. If I were gonna, what color is this? That's that is um, green. So like the grass, and the trees, and the trees. Mm -hmm. See how dark that is. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if you get too much on, you can also just put that right on, and it helps Ooh. blot some up, but n but not all. Do you want more blotted up? And that's where you want to just squeeze this, squeeze some water into this, and make it a little lighter. Is how, so you can control all of the different um, strengths of color. And if you were really going to sit and just make a few of these special, if I were doing this, you know, myself and just going to do it, yeah, I think in terms of a whole group doing or doing really speedy cards, but you could put eight different colors out here and merely make a masterpiece. Um, I'm sure that's what Tim would prefer, but we might be here for two hours. <laughs> um, it's looking good. It is looking good. It is. It's looking great. And I love the look of watercolor, so... Okay. It's very forgiving. It is. What color is that? That looks great. And that is just kind of a brownish. What color is that? Uh, oh, crumb cake. For, it's kind of brown, but you're going to want it to be crumb. a little lighter. It's really dark. Crumb. No, it's, yeah, soft suede. So I guess, yes, it's really dark. So you'll want to squeeze more water on it to make it lighter. You can always add more. Up here, you'll want to squeeze it, I think. Who knows? Okay. You, oh, you squeezed it there. That works, too. That's true. You know what's great about this? Most anything works. It's like playtime for adults when we get out our cards and you end up with something thoughtful that you can use. <laughs> so, you know, we do our traditional Facebook Live over on Facebook on Thursday, but then a couple times a month, I'm gonna come on here and do an extra one on YouTube. That's really cool. I'm doing okay? Yeah. 
And then, as many of you know, we've also started a podcast. We're just kind of enjoying playing around with different ideas. Yeah, oh, that looks great. I think it looks good. You can um, stop right there if you like, or you can add more. It's whatever. But okay. we'll, we'll uh, frame this and put this on. We're going to frame it. Frame it. <laughs> yeah, frame it on a card. <laughs> it might go on the mantle for a while. <laughs> Really but you see how you can control that? I said it really is, you know, um, I love the aqua painters. You know, I, I think this is such a fun way to color things. But if you get the aqua painters, you want to make sure you have a stays on pad <laughs> or they come together. So, Okay, I'm going to, let's put this okay, up so we okay, can okay. chat with people a little. Because we'll put pictures. Or maybe I'm not done. Oh, you can continue because we'll show your finished cards. We just wanted to thank people for joining us for this. Yes, we do. We okay. did. Just a second. Putting up with our learning. Whoa! And then sometimes you can put upside down and see if any drains off. I'm going to change this little. That's really pretty, Tim. Thank you, man. And then he's going to go back and do some really light on it. So, um... It always takes a couple of days to get things up on the blog. But how cool is that? Cool. That was really cool. So we can finish it. <laughs> so thanks. This was what? Seven different ways to use really fine, finely tuned things and add some color. Just do variety. So you really can make quick cards. We made a lot of cards in not that long a time. So thank you for joining us. I will come back. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to take a whole. I'm not done yet. I'm going to take a whole thing. I'm just going to. Oh, I'm just going to blot it. Connie said she's feeling, um, oh she mailed goodness. out all of her homemade cards and now she's feeling lonely. That's those cards were really good. Isn't that nice? That took all of the darkness out of it and it's just going to pass down. So what do you think of it being pastel? Do you, which way do you prefer it? I kind of like this. Yeah, I think that's great. And the thing about doing this in this paper, you can come back and add details later if you wanted to add another color, like a touch of deep red to the roof or anything like that so it's you know watercolor i think watercolor is just a great medium and you know you're supposed to leave white spots and be a little messy so it's very free so thank you for watching hello youtube audience and um we appreciate you being here so i'll yes. come back later yes replay stays on youtube i need to learn how to do playlists so that you can listen to the podcast all in a row or you can see the youtube <laughs> But, you know, one thing at a time, so, you know, these tech-challenged seniors here are having fun with this. Karen, Thanks. I am really tech-challenged because I can't read. You can't read either, but, so. but Karen, Karen is a very good reader, so. Yeah, but I still, <laughs> reading tech stuff is like reading nonsense, so know, we're kind of the same with Karen. So don't do anything with this. I'm going to go and turn it off. Okay. And then I'm going to go do my, run, run my errands. And we're always open to ideas for things, and... Ask questions, so um, we can respond to those too. And sometimes we can just do a question. If we get a bunch of questions, we could just, I think that'd be a fun video, just respond to all these questions. Uh, if they're like technique things, and just show that. So like what you would do with a dauber, things like that. So thanks everyone, have a wonderful weekend, and, and thanks for watching. There's not a button like Facebook, so I don't know what. We're not, we're, we're not sure, one step at a time. <laughs> but we appreciate you. Well, <laughs> and I'm out of words. So I'm going to X you out and see if that works. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Not yet. Don't, don't say anything foolish. Oh. Chris just said you should put a little mistletoe on your green hat. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you want to end the streaming? Yes. End.